Good evening. Good evening. Good evening and welcome into our worship uh, on this uh, Fourth of July weekend, this Independence Day weekend. Uh, thank you for being here on this Saturday night. Uh, it is good to see uh, you here in person and for any of you who are worshiping with us uh, online this evening or whatever it is that you are worshiping with us, welcome, welcome into our uh, worship and fellowship uh, uh, this evening. Uh, if you're worshiping online, take a minute to like this page, subscribe to our channel, uh, leave comments in the comment section below, leave your name, let us know where you're worshiping from. If you're visiting this evening, welcome. We're glad that you are with us. Uh, you can add uh, in the comments uh, people that you're praying for, uh, interact with your fellow worshipers, share readings of, of peace, uh, and uh, interact in that way. We're uh, glad that you are here. And uh, our service this evening is a service of Holy Communion, and so we begin with our order of confession and forgiveness. If you would please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, Receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, you are the city that shelters us, the mother who comforts us. With your Spirit, accompany us on our life's journey, that we may spread your peace in all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our readings. A reading from Isaiah. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice with her in joy. All you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice, your bodies shall flourish like the grass, and it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants, and his indignation is against his enemies. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray a portion of Psalm 66 responsibly. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Be joyful, all the earth. Sing the glory of God's name. Sing the glory of God's praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All your God has for you. Sing to you. Sing to God in me. Come now and see the works of God. How awesome are God's deeds toward all the people. God has mercy on our land, so that they might do more on foot and hear him rejoice in God. Ruling forever in might, God keeps watch over the nations. Let no rebels exalt themselves. Bless our God and peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. Amen. A reading from Galatians. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work, then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride, for all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all the good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap an eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So that whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who follow this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy and upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand to hear the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Lord, Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, 
Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watch Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every once in a while we run across a passage in the Bible that helps us see really pretty clearly what God is doing in these stories and, and by seeing that in such a crystal clear way it helps us to, to maybe better understand what God is doing in our lives and what God is calling us to do and to be in this world now that, that we're living in. That example of today's gospel I think is perfect. We find a glimpse at Jesus's intentions and purposes in his ministry. And we learned a few weeks ago that Jesus has turned, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, where he will fulfill all of God's promises. As he moves toward Jerusalem, he intends to visit a number of villages on the way, announcing the good news of the coming of God's kingdom. This has been Jesus' message from the beginning. Turn around, change your hearts, change your mind. God is coming into this world and into your life. Repent, believe the good news. That announcement is now going on, but it's being multiplied by 35 pairs of, of disciples that Jesus is sending out into the world. And so we see that Jesus' mission to announce the coming of the kingdom, to fulfill all that God has promised for the world, to save the world from the power of sin, death, and the devil, to restore God's people to life in God, is moving towards that with a purpose, with an intention, and with a plan of action. 35 pairs of disciples, sending them out to announce the coming of the reign and rule of God in their lives and in their villages. Jesus gives the disciples the message, turn around, believe, trust in the good news. He instructs them then with a method that is designed, I think, just as much to strengthen their faith as they engage in this mission as it is to accomplish the goals of that mission of welcoming others into this fellowship, into the kingdom of God, and into the work that they share, which Jesus relates to sort of a harvest. The disciples along the way, part of their instructions are that they're to take nothing with them. No extra money, no extra clothes, no extra shoes. And they're really not just supposed to talk to anybody along the way, but to go directly to the towns in villages where Jesus is sending them. They have no means of supporting themselves. And so Jesus, by doing this, will send his disciples out, like he says, like lambs and sheep in the midst of wolves, but also they will discover very quickly the truth of the matter that God will provide for them. They're dependent now completely on God's own providence for their well-being. Where they're going to eat, what they're going to drink, where they're going to sleep, where they're going to find shelter and safe haven. And there's a twist. There's a twist to this. God's promise to provide for these disciples as they go out will find its answer only in the hospitality of the people that the disciples meet and engage and talk to along the way. God will provide for them in a receptive heart that will engage with them in this conversation and open the doors of their home to them, welcome them in, and in that welcome then, find what it is that they need, namely food, shelter, clothing. The sharing of the good news, then, is simply a matter of finding people of goodwill willing to hear their story and their announcement. The story that they are telling about Jesus, the message that God's kingdom is coming, 
and then finding people who are open to that to receive that and will welcome them in. And I think that should probably challenge a lot of our notion of what we have come to think or imagine in our head what sharing the faith or, or doing something called evangelism might be all about. Some of us might have in our heads when we talk about things like evangelism, some kind of track ministry or something that we've been uh, run into, where we run into somebody that aggressively comes into our face and tells us that we need to accept Jesus as our savior, uh, tells us what a sinner we are and we're going to, to hell or maybe something worse than that if we don't come to believe in Jesus. But notice how Jesus' ministry here in the ministry of the disciples is nothing like that. It is simply a matter of announcing that God's love for this world has compelled God who has been faithful to us all along to come into our world and come into our lives. The disciples now, when the authority of Christ are, are bold enough to say, we are bringing to you the announcement of the good news of God, which takes away your sin, welcomes you back into the fellowship of all of God's people, and if you believe that, simply open your house and let's sit down and eat dinner. It is a ministry of relationships and hospitality through which people meet Jesus and put their trust in him and receive in return the peace that comes from knowing Christ. Peace that announces that all your sins are forgiven. That it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter where you've been, that in this moment, the forgiveness that God gives is for you. It quiets the voices of accusations that say, you're not good enough, you're not strong enough, you're not faithful enough. It simply announces that word, that in Jesus' name now, you have peace with God. Simply trust that word and receive it. The meeting of those who have received the good news of the kingdom of God with those who are bringing it. And they're meeting together. Can you see how both of their faith is strengthened? For those who are waiting to hear this word of forgiveness, this word of God's love that welcomes them into this fellowship, that writes their name in the kingdom of God and gives them that inheritance, they hear gladly and receive this good news, so much so that they celebrate with the disciples around the table. For the disciples who are going out, and we could imagine what it would be like for us to go out with this good news, but scared, where are we going to get our food, drink? How are people going to treat us? Are they going to reject us or receive us? But when we're received, they have their faith confirmed, and they can see what God is doing in the world, bringing the messenger together with those who need to hear that message in a relationship that is giving and receiving at the same time. The disciples who bring the message of peace give that message. They give that peace. They heal the sick. They cast out the demons. They bring wholeness in the name of God to that. But they receive something in return. They receive the hospitality and love of the person who receives that and so find their strength. Their strength, their faith strengthened. Can you see how in this moment now, within that house where everything has come together and worked out perfectly, where all are rejoicing together that the kingdom of God has come to them, can you see that that is the glimpse, that is the picture of God's kingdom? The disciples are not preaching, believe in Jesus for some kind of transportation to some kind of heaven, light years or an eternity away. But in this moment of believing and accepting, of dining and fellowship together, we see God present with God's people, making them whole, setting them free. So those who receive the peace find peace. And those who proclaim the peace find that God has been with them all along. And the kingdom of God erupts in those peaceful moments of that time together. 
around a meal when we're eating together in fellowship that overcomes all kinds of sin. Have you ever been at a place or, or had a strained relationship with somebody or a tense moment with somebody that you love? Somebody that was in need of giving and receiving forgiveness. And there you meet together at a table, at a dinner for whatever reason it might be. Maybe it's at a wedding, maybe it's at a funeral, maybe it's just finally you get a quiet dinner out and you finally connect over that dinner. And everything that had been an offense, every shortcoming, every hurt, suddenly it's healed, it's forgiven, it's forgotten. That's what God is doing in the world. Disciples enter into this house announcing the forgiveness of God. The messengers, the very messengers of the Lord's Messiah sit down to eat with them. And it doesn't matter if the person they're eating with is a tax collector or a prostitute or a sinner or somebody that has gone to synagogue their whole entire life. In that moment, it is only God's word and God's forgiveness. That meaning overcomes all kinds of sin. It's a kind of love and kinship. Do you see the power of the force of the good news of the kingdom of God to break the power of the evil one that keeps us bound in to thinking that we are sinful people, unworthy of God's presence, and instead puts our focus back on rejoicing in the coming of the kingdom of God. So how does this take place in our life? What Jesus instructs his disciples to do here will become the pattern of the book of Acts. It's how God's people move out into the world to share the good news. It's how the Apostle Paul works one way or another, entering a town, announcing the peace of God, finding there God has prepared already hearts to receive that good news. Homes opened up, the gospel moves out throughout that area. So why can't the same thing happen in our lives? A couple of weeks ago, I asked you to, to get a sense of the story and how to shape the story of what God has done for you. There's a really good place to start. I would imagine that that was the entrance that the disciples would make as they walked into an unfamiliar town. Let me tell you what I've seen Jesus do for us. Let me tell you what I've seen Jesus do in our life. Let me just simply tell you a story. And then they share their story and announce that they believe that God is active and at work in this world and loves you. And in that moment, that peace be with you moment, things open up. So again, why can't we do the same? If we take those stories that we craft, if we share them with people that God leads us to for whatever reason, in any situation we find ourselves in. And then follow that up by doing maybe the basic, the most simple thing we could do, and that is simply just saying yes. Being open to hear somebody, to talk to them, to say yes to whatever invitation that is there. It may not be an invitation to come and dine in their house, it may be just an invitation that they open up just a little bit more to tell you and share their story and where they need to hear the good news of the gospel. It means taking our faith and being vulnerable enough to go out to give and to receive. We may experience rejection, but where that connection is made, there is nothing more beautiful or more joyous. Jesus is sending us out into the world to serve and to be served. We have received the good news. We have a story of how Jesus has changed and transformed our life. Whether it is baptism or a miracle here or a miracle there. That story isn't just for us or for our faith. It's a story to share, to proclaim. It's a way that we do what is the mission that God has given us to do. To share the good news of Jesus Christ in word and deed. And this is vital to who we are. The invitation into a fellowship 
where Christ is present is so absolutely important to the life of Christians. We have built our whole worship service around it to proclaim it. We walk in here and you hear God's word that in the name of Christ all your sins are forgiven. You have peace with God. When you believe that good news, you receive that peace, and it arrives in and among you. And we celebrate that Christ is present in sharing this meal together. Sure, here it's just a little piece of bread and a little bit of wine, but it is this connection to this dinner, to this dining together, that we can no longer look at each other in any kind of animosity or through anything, any barriers that the world has. We are one in Christ here. The good news has forgiven and taken away all of our sins. We've been made God's people, God's children, and we dine together here. And then we go out rejoicing to share that good news with others, to welcome them in, to tell that story, to say, you have to come here. Everything falls apart except for Christ being here, and this is where we find new life. This action of being called in to God's grace, being sent out of discovering, of hearing and believing that good news and, and seeing it manifest in a meal around us, it is our beating heart of our faith. It's how our faith is strengthened, it's how our love is grown, and it's how the Word of God continues to reach out and to change the lives of people in our community in the same way that ours, our lives have been changed as well. So now we move, we confess our faith, we tell the story of what we receive, the forgiveness that we have, and we dine together. This week, however, go out from this place and look to somehow meet up with somebody that needs to hear this good news. It might be somebody that has drifted away from the Lord, somebody that is, is, is experiencing some kind of hardship, some kind of, of trouble. Reach out to them and talk to them. Invite them to join you, maybe out for a dinner or over to your house or, or in some place where they can really feel and experience the forgiveness and love of God that you give to them. And you reach out to forgive and to welcome and to share that good news with them. Can you think of somebody right now that you would want to talk to this week, that you'd want to keep in your mind or maybe reach out to? Anybody that God brings to your mind who needs to hear some good news? Think about it. As we go out from this place tonight, we'll go out and share that good news. And then let's come back next week and rejoice at all that God has done for us. Amen. Please stand, and together let us confess our faith using the words of our baptismal creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come and judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, for the creation, and all who are in need. Lord of the harvest, you send your church into the world to proclaim Christ's new creation to all. Renew the church as it carries out your mission of peace and healing. And we pray for missionaries who accompany your people. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation abounds with flowing waters and diverse creatures. 
guide the work of climate scientists as they develop and advocate ways to restore Earth's natural balance and motivate humankind to adopt lifestyles that protect and sustain the Earth. God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. You guard the nations, let no leaders exalt themselves, but lift up the most vulnerable and work for the good. Send your spirit to eradicate classism and inequality, violence and war, poverty and hunger. God of grace, hear our prayer. You desire abundant life for all as we celebrate Independence Day, instill in us gratitude, generosity, and persistence in working toward freedom for all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. Mothering God, you care for all people in need. Nourish those who are hungry. Restore employment to those who have lost work. Heal those who are sick and comfort all who are dying or grieving, especially those we name out loud in our hearts or list online. God of grace, hear our prayer. We remember the saints who proclaim your reign on earth and now rest in you, especially Thomas the Apostle, who we remember today. Make us faithful in our witness to Christ's new creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and every place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. Share a sign of God's peace with each other. You may be seated. stand for our offering. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all. Unite them with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence, and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. God of all creation, all that you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. you lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is she who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Lord, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. If you would take out your communion kit, open up the side that has the bread on, and take the bread out. And you hold that up. The body of Christ given for you. You open up the side that has the wine, and then hold it up. The blood of Christ shed for you. true body and true blood, strengthen you and keep you in his grace and eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A few announcements here. Thank you to all of our Vacation Bible School volunteers. We had uh, a few more than 20 of our young uh, of young people that were here. Uh, a couple of them were visitors for us. It was a great time we had uh, together. All the volunteers worked hard, especially Erin Soames and her family, to pull the whole thing together. But each and every volunteer at every station uh, made it a special night. Uh, it was really we had a great time uh, Monday through Thursday. So uh, thank you to all those who volunteered. Uh, it was really uh, great to see everyone just enjoying themselves so much. Uh, Greet share uh, will happen this Tuesday. It was canceled last week uh, for Vacation Bible School, but it's back this Tuesday at seven o'clock uh, here in the lounge. Uh, next Sunday, July 10th, uh, there is a congregational meeting uh, we do have some news on the sale of our property and some other things that are that go along with that as far as some contingencies we need to discuss and we will need to vote on as a congregation. So if you could please make every effort to be here on July 10th at 1115. It shouldn't be a long meeting, but it is an important meeting, uh, especially since we have to have a vote on something to do with our property. Uh, some events that are coming up. Uh, uh, here that you may want to take advantage of or try uh, doing something new. Uh, that is that uh, we have a walking theology with Vicar Dan. Uh, you'll meet at Roosevelt Park. You're going to meet down by the edge of the parking lot by the skating rink, uh, kind of right there by the skating house uh, where that parking lot is. That can take you out either out to the lake or wherever it is that uh, the Vicar would want to move you. Uh, as far as the walk goes, but uh, that will start on Wednesday, July 13th at 7 o'clock. Uh, in August, it'll happen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. And then a couple of weeks from now, at the end of July, right after our Saturday service, we're going to have a, a special ice cream uh, social. Please stay, play, uh, plan to stay after uh, worship uh, that week, uh, and hopefully some others will come in. Uh, they have some really great activities planned around that social, a great chance to get to know everybody and uh, uh, make that kind of connection. Just as we we're talking about uh, uh, tonight, right, as Jesus shows us, the sharing of the gospel is really being able to come together around this good news of Christ, be able to see uh, God present in that moment. So, so you think of an ice cream social as just maybe a chance to have a delicious Sunday or get to chat with some friends, but it really is a place where, where God's kingdom can start to take root and, 
And uh, the same thing maybe with walking theology. Who knows who you'll meet around Roosevelt Park that you could invite, that you can share a story or be part of. And in any number of ways that you're out and about this week, uh, keep your eyes open to where it is that God is leading you. Uh, you will also find uh, that in that sharing and that exchange, your faith will grow as well. Uh, no Wednesday Bible study uh, this week, uh, but we will have our Thursday Bible study uh, on Zoom. Uh, you can find that, uh, the information for that there. And daily prayer will continue Monday through uh, Saturday. Um, uh, on uh, morning prayer and then night prayer will be on Zoom every night. So, so again, just for this week, uh, no uh, uh, Wednesday uh, Bible study, uh, but uh, we'll hopefully come back for that too. Any other questions? Anything else that's going on? Any other news or information? The food pantry has been busy right here. Uh, yes, it has. A busy week, uh, probably reflecting some of the things you've noticed in the world around us as well, affecting those who are vulnerable. So uh, thank you for your generosity and for caring for you for your work and keeping things stocked and, and up and for all of our food pantry volunteers. So we'll have some reports on that next week as well. Uh, all right, please stand uh, to receive God's blessing and uh, move into your 4th of July week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So go in peace. Share the good news. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.